Bishop Louis was a bit of a legend, a local legend around the Fairbanks area. He'd been in on the mining scene for probably 50 years, coming in at the very beginning in the, uh, of the gold rush. He started out in, the, uh, in Canada and made a name for himself, came into this area, made a name for himself in Fairbanks and ended up in the Nome Creek Valley. During the gold rush days, uh, almost everyone had a nickname based on some characteristic or some accident, uh, some misfortune or fortune. And uh, for Louis, his name, the two-step, is related to the, the dance called the two-step. Apparently, when he was uh, in the early years in Dawson, he had made quite a bit of money, came into Dawson and hit the saloons. And he loved to dance to Turkey in the Straw. And there's a legend that one night he had a lot of money and he loved that dance and he asked the band to play it 175 times. So ever since then, he's been called Two-Step Louie. The fables behind the man describe the stories of so many young men who took that huge leap of faith and traveled so far to find gold. The, the miners were a really interesting group, and I think that you had to be a little bit um, off the norm, outside the bell curve, to come up here in the first place. And Louis, because he was here for so many years, he stuck in the minds of people here. In November 2010, my Aunt Beth mailed me a box simply titled Uncle Louie. It contained paperwork such as Louie's will, along with old photos he had sent back home during his years in Alaska. You know that he must have had uh, a lot of physical strength and stamina. I have the impression that he was just sort of a small, wiry kind of guy. Uh, he may have uh, been kind of a funny, had a sense of humor, I think, because you had never, I never heard anything bad about him. What fascinated me were the letters Blanche Cascaden had written to my great-grandpa Ted from 1946 on into the 50s. She shared the story of her lifelong friendship with Louie and of his last winter at his cabin by Nome Creek. She found that he had died at some point during the winter. The fire went out and eventually wolverines found their way into the cabin. He was laid to rest in a grave dug by Blanche and her brother they placed a wooden cross with a brass nameplate at his gravesite. In May 2011, going off the letters and an old handwritten map, my sister and I set out to find the location of Louis' claim. We were thrilled to find the remains of his cabin and other items virtually untouched since his death in 46. He made his last trip home to Streeter, Illinois in 1940. An old faded family photo captured that unmistakable grin and the twinkle in his eyes. To our family, he is simple Uncle Louie. He always missed his family, but his true love was that plot of ground by Nome Creek.